think I got all the bugs figured out. I got... Ow! I think I have got um, the bugs figured out. This is going to be interesting and a big change. I am oily as shit. That's not new, though. Um, I'm now recording on my computer with my new camera that I got for Christmas. The quality is literally 10,000 times better. Like, I... It's insane. Um, also, let me turn this down so I can turn me up. I'm also not using my phone microphone anymore. Um, not for this anyway, which is crazy because this is going to sound way better. I already know that, and that's just weird. Um, but I didn't want to fall short, even though I kind of already did, on not posting on Sunday for YouTube. But... I will not count that as a loss because I have been so sick. You can probably still hear it in my voice how snotty I am, and it's awful. Um, I've been on antibiotics for, like, five days now, which is, like, great because I'm actually, like, I can tell that I'm getting better, which is beautiful because at first I was literally on DayQuil for, like, three effing days straight, like, DayQuil, NyQuil, DayQuil, 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 NyQuil. It was stupid, and it was annoying, and I could just feel how much I needed it, which was, like, also very annoying to me. I don't like that feeling. Um, at all. So, I'm finally feeling better. I did actually rest, which was, like, one of my New Year's resolutions was to, like, actually take time and rest. So, that's huge because I don't usually do that at all. And that shocks a lot of people because they see my content, see me posting all the time, and they're like, why aren't you posting on this social or why aren't you doing that? And it's like, there's a lot to manage. And also just everyday life, like cooking and cleaning, taking care of the dog, taking care of myself going to the gym. There's a lot of things that factor into that, that a lot of people just like, when they see you on socials and things, they just like automatically think you're a robot for some reason and that you don't have a life other than doing socials, which we're going to dive into in a minute because I listened to this um, podcast. Um, it's like one of my favorite podcasts. It's called Daughter Issues. I don't know if any of you guys know it, but it's really great. Um, and the daughter... Um, her name is Talissa, just announced that she has an OnlyFans, and I just wanted to kind of touch base on this because I don't talk about this stuff a lot, but I really wanted to dive into it. So I've got a lot of other recaps that I want to do before I jump into that, and like, let's talk about this year starting off because the end of last year was fucking rocky, but we're doing the damn thing. Welcome 2024, 2024, let's go. I have, like, literally, okay, this is a big-ass list, <laughs> but this is more than just, like, what I want to talk about today. This is a lot, oh my god, why am I so oily? Anyway, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, why I want, like, a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but this is also a list of, like, stuff that I need to get done. It's, like, also my to-do list. It's, like, the bottom half is, like, just, like, partially other shit and just, like, random stuff that I need, like, like a table runner and stupid shit. Um, anyway, let's recap last year. I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't really know what I was doing. I also didn't have a plan. So all of that is pretty negative when you just feel like lost and confused and like don't know what you're doing. Um, so this year I've made plans. I've made goals, which I'm excited and I tend to stick to. I also, um, you can see down here, so this little sticky note, I put sticky notes everywhere now, so because I lose motiv motivation so quickly, but I also forget what I need to get done. Even when it's on a list, even when it's a reminder on my phone, I forget it. So what I've been doing is putting sticky notes around, and I've got some just like randomly in my office, of random tasks that I need to get done. Um, so that way, once I do it, I can take the sticky note off. And the benefit of that is that I hate the way that that looks. When I walk in the room, I hate it. So I'll probably end up doing it fairly soon because I think that looks like shit. I mean, no, it's really not that bad. Like, it's not like a busted ass cabinet or something. It's just a sticky note on it. But that's just how my brain works. Why? I don't know. That's just what it is. But anyway, so I've set a lot of goals. I've done a lot of things and I have been journal journaling a lot more, which is great. And it's helped me kind of clarify where I want to go and what I want to do, which feels like, yeah, no shit, you should have had that goal, but after going through career changes a few times and just deciding what I want to do, if I want to do it, if I even like doing it, 
and how I want to do it. That's a lot. And like I've said before in previous videos, I'm so grateful for Justin because... Oh my gosh, I thought I wasn't recording for a second. I was going to lose my mind. Um, but I'm so thankful for Justin because I have the opportunity to do exactly what I want to fucking do. Which sometimes is nothing. Let's be honest. Sometimes everybody's dream is to do nothing. Now, too much of something can be awful no matter what it is. Whereas like too, like doing nothing, like literally staring at a ceiling for 16 hours every single day, that sounds awful. Okay, that sounds like a personal hell. But when you break it up into the week and it's like, holy shit, I've worked for four days, it's, uh, it sounds kind of nice to sit at, on the floor and just stare at the ceiling. Just lay there. Nothing. It's silent sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes it's nice. But if you do that too much, then you're like, holy shit, I need to go out and do something. Finding the balance of that is being, is like the hardest thing so far because I have the opportunity to do that. So it gets a little, it feels crazy to have the opportunity to do that. That's the biggest thing. So after last year and how it ended, I am trying to be more hopeful and excited for what's going on. Um, if we want a little recap, I always touch base very briefly on family things and not often in depth of my family. It's more so I talk about certain things that have affected me, like being a middle child and like just very broad, but not actual like how it affects me or how I think of it. Like that was just a very minor thing like being a little child that I mean that's just what it is it's not I don't think it's anything too serious for me but other things I don't talk about are like finances and how I learned about finances the reason I had to learn about finances and so quickly and on my own and late compared to a lot of people um in my opinion and how I have not really done anything for myself I've always only had the draw or desire to do things for other people. Like, I worked my ass off to get an apartment to know I could be on my own, but to provide for other people. It wasn't to do it for myself, like when I lived in Minneapolis. So, I worked so hard because I knew I needed to get out of where I was, but only because I couldn't help people if I was where I was. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's also not great because I was always putting other people before myself. And yes, that's like good to an extent, but also damaging to your health and like mental state. Because if I'm only working for other people and now I lose all of those other people, what am I doing? I don't know. So last year was really a discovery on that and how I really was just figuring that out that was just a huge I just want to show off my microphone because I think it's cute um that was a huge turning point for me and especially now just realizing there is so much there's just so much that I could be doing for myself to then still be able to benefit other people as well and help other people after taking care of myself with this being the first vlog on I don't want to um I don't want it to be too long and drawn out uh especially just coming back but I'm going to oh, fuck. don't worry my eczema and my armpits almost gone so that's super hype anyway that was a random that's why I'm so itchy is because I have eczema because of a brand of deodorant gave me a rash that the doctor told me was eczema it wasn't. It was, I mean, I guess technically, yeah, eczema, dry, itchy, flaky skin, sure. Also a rash that I got from the native brand deodorant. So they can fuck right off. Excuse me. So they can fuck right off because that was almost six months that I was literally like couldn't put on deodorant, couldn't sweat in the gym, literally, because it would burn and couldn't do anything unless I had like my shirt's like tucked into my armpit so it could absorb the sweat. And then once it did, I would have to move my shirt because it would be so painful. And then it would get so swollen at night that I would literally have to take um, like ibuprofen because I needed the swelling to go down and I needed it to stop fucking hurting. 
that was the worst experience of my life and finally figuring out that it was that made me happy because I could just completely fucking get rid of it and never spend money on any of their shit again. But that was a little rant beside the point. Back to how last year ended. Um, not great for me. My grandpa passed away. His funeral is actually in a few weeks, like his like memorial service. Um, so that was really hard. Um, right after he passed that same weekend, I found out my great grandma, and yes, I know that's crazy, my great grandma, um, still here and thriving was, uh, she was also admitted into the hospital. She doesn't really have much time left, so that was also very stressful. <laughs> and then uh, my other papa um, also was admitted into the hospital because of neglect and shit care at the facility that he was at. So then he ended up in the hospital and almost dying because of how shit the care was at the facility he was at. He is getting better. I got to see him before I left for vacation. There was also a weird flux in mood and everything because I was going on vacation and I was supposed to be so happy. It's Christmas. I'm traveling. I'm not in the cold. Like it was all these things, all these positive things that I was supposed to be feeling, but it was hard because I still... I felt guilty for being excited and happy knowing I was leaving my family when all of that's happening. On top of all of that happening, which I'll touch on everything else in a minute, but also why I was feeling guilty was because I always want to help my siblings. I love my siblings and I will do anything for them as, as long as I live for as much as I can give. Um, so I felt at like the worst position because I was trying to be excited and like I've always been very negative around the holidays um, because I just have a lot of trauma and baggage and things that come with the holidays. I am getting better but it still is like opening a wound every time the holidays come around which just kind of sucks. So I'm working on it. Jay's definitely helped with it so much but it um speaking of family that's my mom calling. I'll answer that in a minute. Um but it was a very weird and hard balance to be okay with being excited while still being sad and not and like telling myself that I don't need to feel guilty even though I did feel guilty I felt guilty just literally living like living and doing other things outside of certain circles which is something that I fight with very often um, on, like, being guilty and not being guilt. Who the fuck is calling me now? Spam? Shut up. Um, but yeah, being guilty and not being guilty, all of that. So it was a very hard balance. Um, I also have dealt with a lot of things with, on top of that, I've dealt with a lot of things with my dad and there's part of me that, like, doesn't want to say this because it's not my position to speak on it even though I am very angry about it because it was also something that happened at the end of last year that made it pretty shit um the house that I lived in from probably like mid high school until now um like my parents house my dad's house um my younger brother has lived there for a very long time because that's I mean, that's where we grew up, and then my dad moved out, so my brother got the house, essentially. Well, I, and I also still have to figure this out, whether I am combined in this bankruptcy or not. I'm pretty sure I am, and I get notifications for it, so therefore, I was filed for bankruptcy. Not by choice. Not by choice. My dad did that, filed for bankruptcy, looped me in somehow, and then I was then also bankrupt which is wild and confuses the shit out of me so I still have to do a little deep dive and understanding what the fuck was going on there but anyway the bankruptcy was in hopes to save the house which didn't happen so we now are losing the house my dad did not say anything for months for months didn't even makes it feel like and seem like didn't even try which sucks. Um, so we're losing that house and I get it. 
people lose houses, things happen, life happens. But me looking on this as a second time that this whole scenario has happened twice, to me that's just history repeating itself. I have now come full circle, watched it happen when I was younger, and now we're right back at the top. Right back at the top of that, and we're on the fucking come down. Because although I don't live there, it still pains me the amount of fucking basically neglect that it takes to get to that point without asking for help, without communicating anything, irritates me to my core. I, it's crazy and it makes me so angry, but at the same time, I'm so numb. I'm so numb to it that, like, what am I saying? It almost doesn't affect me the same way it does because obviously I'm affected and obviously I'm upset and angry, but, sorry, my throat's so dry from being sick, but what's crazy is just how it gets to that point and being okay with not letting us know until we, not we really because I don't live there, get a notice on the door. Not until then was anything communicated. Nothing. And that's insane to me. So that's also how, what was happening at the end of last year, which obviously, if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, like, I'm not going to post that kind of stuff on there because, well, I'm just not. It takes more explanation and I feel like if I were to just post one thing, it would go awry. Like, things would go fucking crazy and I wouldn't have my chance to give my piece. So I like talking in a longer um, time frame platform to be able to actually explain and talk about things. <clears throat> and as always, you can comment, ask questions. That's fine. I will answer them um, when I can. But I'm. It, I just didn't want to post it in such a short little clip, and then everything just go fucking like hit the shit hit the fan essentially. Shit. Sorry. Okay. So I just felt better talking about it on here and being able to like explain everything and kind of talk about it but what the cherry on top the cherry on top of everything I just said about my dad in the house um he while not paying for the house okay somehow managed to save money um which is great we want that we want everybody to save money we want to have money for you guys, for you, when you're doing shit, or you like, you're like, I want to try this new thing, and I'm going to take, dip into my savings. Great. That's what it's for. To do those things. But what's crazy is that he got a, enough money, or at least a down payment, right? I don't know how rings work. I don't buy them. Um, to propose. (laughs) To his girlfriend. Um, and not that it's any of my or my sibling's business, who he wants to marry or who he's in a relationship with, because it's not. He's grown, um, and also he makes his own choices and basically took on a whole new family and left us completely, officially, um, prior to this. But with that whole thing, it just makes you fucking think. And that's the only thing that's been stuck in my mind is literally, how could you? That's, that's the fucking main question. Just how fucking could you? Because I genuinely, I don't get it. And I don't think I ever will. And honestly, I don't think I ever want to. Um, because I just feel that comes from such a negative place a negative aspect and a negative part of life that I'll accept it for what it is but I don't want it I don't I don't know so that was a big big whammy for the end of the year um with all of that happening so that's why I was not I was taking time off I didn't stream I also then went on vacation and then I needed time off. When we came back, I got sick. It's been a week. I'm still sick. Um, ew. 
but it's been a week and I'm still sick. Um, so hopefully after this course of like 10 day antibiotics, I will be better because this shit sucks. I said that I wanted to, um, talk about the OnlyFans in that podcast that I listened to. I'm going to save that for next week because that is going to be an entire video in itself, um, touching on, touching base on and going in depth on OnlyFans and making money and how they talked about it on there because I do have my own viewpoints and my own, um, input that I want to give, especially being a creator. Um, I, a creator in general and a creator for OnlyFans, I <coughs> definitely have a lot I would just like to add on to. So that's going to be its own. We'll talk about that on Sunday because I have so much to say. Um, but that's basically where my year ended off. I hope your year, year ended off better than mine. I hope your holidays, whichever one you celebrate, were all great. Whether it was just sitting at home or actually doing stuff, either way. Either way sounds nice. Um, but I did want to just... I wanted to start the year off right because I have so many goals and so many, so many things I want to accomplish and do. So being consistent on here is a big one because I miss it and it felt great when I used to do it before. That's Mr. Mo. Come here, honey. Come say hi. Oh, hi, handsome man. Where are you sleeping? Oh, yeah. You want to talk? What do you got to say? You gotta tell them anything new. Say, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow and I need to get my paw checked. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, honey. Oh, you kind of stink. We might need to get you in for another bath, too. You can go up on the couch and go ahead. And now with the new camera, you can see Mo all the time. Oh, look at how cozy and sweet you are. You look at this boy. Oh, look how... Isn't that the life? His life is the life. So look how fucking cozy that is. Oh, man. If I even were to think about curling up next to him, he would just get up and leave me. <laughs> oh. The sweetest boy. You're my biggest supporter, you know that? You're my biggest supporter, my biggest fans, my bestest friend. Oh, you're okay, honey. It's okay. We're just hanging out. Yeah. So we'll touch base on that topic next week. Uh, but again, I just wanted to start the year off good and going and fucking ready. So I'm fucking ready and I'm excited yeah yeah welcome back I hope you stay and we'll talk about more of that because I don't talk about that either um next week and I think that'll be a really fun one I also have like a QA and a that I'm going to do with Jay about creators like myself um so if you do have any questions like about that I'm going to put it in my Instagram and just, like, ask and like ask whatever questions you want um, because I'm going to bring him on and we're going to do, like, a mini little one-off, <clears throat> could be more if you guys like it, um, session of Jay and I talking and kind of answering from my perspective and from his perspective questions about the type of content I create, our life in general, how it works for us, that type of thing. So stay tuned. And I'll see you guys next week.